here in the bottom left and corner of Data Sea. Playing for Dragon Phoenix Gaming. It's the Blue Zerg, the man, the legend. It's Rogue. His opponent from Kaizi Gaming. Playing as the Red Terran in the opposite corner. Makes a noise for time. Not the usual map you can see many shenanigans on. I'm not expecting anything too crazy. To just make us... Like, the most immediate comparison I can make. This map is uh, probably going to be the new... Um, the Dozen Atmospheres. Like, the similarities between these two maps are actually incredible. They're incredibly similar. Compared to 2000 Atmospheres, the Odyssey is a little bit tougher to work through the middle. There's a, a lot of uh, side blockers, especially. Alongside uh, quite some uh, choke points and high ground, low ground ramps to traverse. While on uh, 2000 Atmospheres, we had like that uh, ramp that brought into the third and fourth which was uh, a little bit easier to attack into while on data sea the ramps are much smaller and of course they're in a much closer position to the bases as you can see like over here the ramp is uh, not really that far it's a couple decent locations you can get something going but yeah, it's not an easy map to play the aggressor. Here comes the Reaper up the Reaper ramp. Ready to be greeted by a couple of Zerglings waiting for the Queen to hatch. Six links out of Rogue. To just try and get a little bit more map control. Try to get some scouting information from the get-go. Ramp to the natural. Even though it doesn't really look like it is there, it is there. So it's not very easy for this river to make anything happen. It's like time is going to be content with the kind of information he got, and we already see a little bit of uh, information about the intentions of time. I was uh, speaking about how kind of easy it is to defend on a free base array on this particular map and uh, Taimi is going to do exactly that he's going to go into free base play and uh, try to get it going from there a little bit of a greedy play but not seeing a third production structure being added to the mix by the Red Terran while we already see his uh, command center being close to being finished soon to be turned into an orbital command and time is uh, definitely going to have an explosion of production sooner rather than later due to the crazy amount of resources it's going to be gathering in a little while. There's basically two ways you can play the matchup nowadays. It's either going to be a very aggressive two-base play that uh, requires you to deal damage to then transition out of it. Or it's going to be a little bit of a slower free rex play into command center and the starport to still try to somewhat gain map control with tons of marines and still being very defensive but you're gonna have your power spike a little bit later on which can be detrimental against players such as rogue but uh, this kind of style plays more into depleting larva than uh, he plays into actually dealing with serious economical damage. But here you see tons of aliens trying to make something happen over here. The wall of queens will definitely stop that from ever happening. And uh, honestly, with this quick spread and these small ramps, it's going to be complicated for time to get into that location. Very easy base to defend. I'm just gonna try and go the other way. There's only two queens in this location, but time doesn't really want to commit too hard into this. 
which makes a lot of sense. Plus one, plus one started for Rogue. Time working with one single NG babe. Starting the infantry weapons, plus one. Now working with the three wrecks. I was talking about adding combat shields, already having added steam, and now infantry armor as well. But the second NG babe just being finished. Queens defending creep as best as they can. Having control over these side blockers in the middle can be incredibly important. Sending to walk up the ramp of Greed to go in and defend this location. This archery is honestly very close to being cancelled. There's not enough damage output. The Watchtower will be in control of time now that the Ling has been killed. But over here, there's nothing to defend the third base. Of the Terran player, just one medivac to keep his SCB's healthy. Marines moving to position, so to be collected. Here comes the first drop of the game for time. A rogue going uh, into a little bit of a late lair, putting even a, a macro arch over here alongside his double expand. While time is still trying to kill creep and maybe find even something more along the way. A lot of creeps in this location. Tons of energy. Ooh, that's off creep though. Transfuses are still good enough. And in the end, no queen dies. Where's the medium? Oh, here it is. Of course, you don't want to commit too hard into that. There's a couple banelings in the location in the in this location. Now some trivial hooks. Upgraded yet. There's uh, probably going to be a couple dead creep tumors in a little while. Here comes the scan. While Rook tries desperately to break down these rocks while the queens get a focal position. Breaking down these queens is incredibly important for stopping time from killing the creep in this position. Creep spread on the side of Rook is looking nothing short of amazing. His economy is booming. At a, an outstanding rate. His stack is uh, kind of lagging behind a little bit, but not even by that much. He's uh, even on upgrades. He's uh, going to be ahead two bases, but well, one now that the command center out of time finishes. And Centrifugal Looks is still pretty close from being finished. Of course, time is adding now thanks to the mix. Plus one vehicle weapons. Is going to be upgraded very soon. Rogue trying to get control of the watchtower on the left. On the right side, a little bit harder. See a scan being used forward to spot quick tumors over here and spot the position of the army of Rogue. Rogue's not going to be broken by time, of course. That's Rogue's duty in this position. It's not gonna break them that easily. Rogue moving on the left side, time reads the play perfectly. Already has army stationed over there to defend his most forward base. Hive in the making for Rogue, soon to be plus two plus two on Mele and Carapaz. Here comes the army of the Zerg. Ooh, beautiful connections from the Banelings. Time saves as much as he can. But he's definitely lagging behind in army as well right now, Rogue. Booming completely out of control, breaking down the rocks as well. There's nothing stopping him from getting full control of the map. Side blockers completely controlled by creep. It's down to time to actually do something to gain control of the map. Ghost Academy is definitely a good play. Nukes can definitely zone the army out, kill creep tumors, and do much, much more. Even though they're very expensive and I'm not sure if it's something that time can afford, especially with this big attacking coming from the Zerg player. There's no more Banelings, but the lanes are making wonders, depleting the army supply of time of key units. And now 80 lanes are in the makings. There's not a lot of larvae, as you can see. There's actually no larvae at all. Rogue's still working with many archeries, many queens to support them. And his, his creep spread is uh, so amazing that he honestly can afford to lag a little bit behind in army supply until he has his explosion of larva again. 
You can see this being hard to support though. Yes, he is still getting a lot of larva, but he needs to be a little bit more careful. He cannot waste too many units like that. He has depleted the key unit army count for time. But he needs to still be very, very careful about his uh, army movements. Yeah, this is a little bit of an all-out attack into three tanks position. There's so many lanes out there, though. The last two plus two lanes still hurt like a truck. And the Bailings are ready to get into this mineral line. And yes, we don't have WCS activated. Uh, you can see uh, the, arm, the economy of time has been completely ravished through by these Bailings. 30 SMBs will go down in the effort of running away from the Bailings at this third base location. Broke another explosion of larva with three vipers incoming as well. The last three plus three soon to be finished for both players, being extremely good at keeping up with the upgrades throughout the game. Rogue, of course, being a little bit too unchecked by his opponent, is uh, kind of growing out of control. Blue flamey, neither from time. Not exactly the upgrade I was expecting. The must being killed on this left side to ensure the command center can land. But uh, there's still quite enough creep. There's uh, not many bases that Tank can get over here. Getting control of this could be absolutely massive for the Terran player. But it's definitely not looking easy. comes and another big attack from Rogue. Not a lot of pain lanes, but you can't stop blinding clouds. You can see the EMP depleting the energy of this Viper from someone. Not before they completely annihilate the tanks with their blinding clouds. 108, 113 more lanes incoming. Rogue needs to be extra careful. I was looking about how Larva is kind of irreplaceable in the later stages of the game due to how fast the Terran player can support his production himself and uh, how much uh, the Terran player can do with a uh, little army supply if it comes to that. Adrenaline Glance is definitely a good uh, transition, well not really a transition, a good upgrade from what Rogue already has. A tiny is handling the stone so far, putting a little bit of a peon. Wait. Trying to walk off creep in a little bit of a deadly position. No transfuse is available off creep. Off creep, so that queen will go down without really fighting back. We on the left side. Don't see a plan for just transition. Time knows that this base is going to be under attack very soon. There's no anti-air. The command center will easily lift and fly away. But over here on the right side, oh big, big waste of bane leads. Rogue is gonna commit over here in the middle. The tanks are basically killing each other. And three tanks will go down. In the end though, you can see the explosion of army out of Rogue not being as good as before with Larva. Slowly but steadily depleting in his steady supply. We on the right. Time. Probably deciding to attack into this. We'll check out a new coming to try and be a little bit more a lot of efficient at breaking down those tanks uh, tank uh, siege positions but yeah time is uh definitely in control at least of his ramp on this side on the right though rogue finding again a very good spot to attack into and over here on the right he's gonna commit with full pain links and yeah the connections are not exactly great but he forces yet another lift on his base on the left side we're now going to be maxed out again. Ten more drones actually incoming from the Zerb player to try and maybe saturate this base on the left as well, trying to gain control of the Vespin geysers, which are not exactly that easy to defend, at least on this side. Rogue probably trying to make a bigger effort at defending this than he should, like at least trying to trick time that he is really trying hard to defend that base. But it's instead pretty much attacking on every single side. Only the tanks will survive 
this big attack from Rogue, and Rogue is uh, going to be maxed out again very soon. Reflection of time is good, but not good enough. He's gonna tap out, and Rogue relentlessly attacking in. He's gonna gain game number one with a honestly very, very clean game. Double command center incoming from time yet again. This time even earlier than before. Probably going to be another free rex play. At least that's my expectation. And could be a banshee play too. There's a, the other kind of a free command center play I've been uh, seeing a lot nowadays. But uh, definitely time wants to try and play a little bit greedily, knowing that Rogue doesn't really love its early game aggression and actually plays a very late lair game. So having more tech to punish the lack of tech of your opponent, it's pretty decent if you have the economy to support it, otherwise it, uh, it is a much riskier thing to do. But with three bases, the risks are minimal. And you can see actually uh, an early steam being started even before the third structure gets started, which is of course going to be a Rex, and we're probably going to see another one even before the support. I don't necessarily like this kind of play with only two Rex, I do feel like the third one is kind of mandatory. Especially since you're gonna get so much map control with the aliens anyway, you don't really need to start dropping that early. You can, yeah, wait it out. Get to free reps, and we're basically having uh, a carbon copy of a game one built on both sides. Both, the, both of the players are gonna try to take control of the balcony over here. On the third base location of Waterfall. Being uh, at this stage well known for having uh, some interesting sieging control position over here, making the map even harder to traverse in uh, certain matchups. And this is definitely one of them, especially for Zerg against Terran players, who can like drop a couple tanks over here and then just know that this base is basically impossible to attack into. And this location over here is almost completely impossible to traverse unless you get from here or from here. Sometimes from here, if you get through the side, into this a uh, little bit of a side road leading into the base, but it's a risky play. Anyway, here comes the lair. 5, 10, probably gonna see a Bailing Nest. Yeah, here it comes. Yeah, it's an absolute carbon copy of game number one. You can see Rogue going to... Get his lair tech a little bit later than usual to try and get his upgrades going up as soon as possible, matching the upgrades of his opponent, which is uh, quite the feat. All the time, as soon as he drops down his fur base, he's gonna drop down two more wrecks as well. You can see the timing out of Lair and Bailing Ness being completed basically at the same exact time, sorry. Here they are. Bailing Ness is going to be started very very soon. Rogue likes to get burrow as soon as possible. It's a good way to defend your drones if it comes to that. And it's a good way to try and uh, trick your opponent. And, uh, maybe Bailing Traps. Or uh, just overall being uh, very useful to keeping units you want to keep alive. Bailing speed going to be just under halfway through while time attacks over here on the left side. Going to take control of the map by killing quick tumors. And of course, he has a much more expendable army of marines right now with five wrecks up and running and a fourth base soon to be up as well. Rogue with his usual double expand is going to try to take control of the base on the right side as well. A couple scans forward from time to try and kill Kirtumas, try to get on top of Queens, there's still a lot of energy on these Queens, it's going to be completely impossible for time to, uh, to, to do anything uh, in uh, this location. While a creep on the bottom right is going to be much easier to kill. A couple of Marines too many will go down, but they will go down for a good cause, lowering down the Bailing count 
Now that Rogue is uh, starting to get a little bit more Vespin, is not going to be that important. Rogue actually worked with... How many? Yeah, he's not working with many geysers, he's working just with four. Which is the usual cunt you want to work with if you're only going to get tech and banelings. Sometimes you get five if you want to play a little bit more banelink heavy. But uh, again, it's a risky thing to do. Thanks, Queen Siege in the choke point, forcing Rogue to move forward and lose a couple units before retreating. Time knows the importance of this high ground position and he's gonna drop down a sensor tower while keeping some of his army stationed over there while the rest of the army is defending instead on the right side while well, defending it's mostly attacking decent pre-spreads gonna lose only a couple marines to the banelings and gonna snipe a couple of them before they can do anything you can see this balcony being so incredibly strong in the hands of a tavern player Rogue is going to have a nightmarish time trying to get Rambais going. And that's big strength of this map, especially for Terran. Especially in this matchup. Very good choice by time. You go immediately onto Waterfall for game number two. Rogue is trying his best to keep up with Army Supply, but he is going to need a big fight like the one he had on Data C. And time is getting to the most obnoxious positions over here on the right side killing crypt tumors as soon as they spawn basically and uh, rogue is going to have again nightmarish time trying to pull us around over here that's very little ground to work with but here comes the pain it's not gonna get the best connections with the tanks especially shooing them away rogue a little bit on the back foot is going to probably have to sack this base altogether that's a couple of banelings trying to get in position, but you're never gonna get a surround or a flank. With this location being so good to split your army. Banelings are gonna stop the marines on the right side. Meanwhile, on the other side of the map, Rogue is trying to send some uh, links in to try and get something going. You can see the whole position over here. Killing uh, quite some workers, actually. Over here on the right side, the tanks are gonna be cleared. Rogue! incredible moves by the Zerg player catching the attention of his opponent on the left side with a big run by of units and defending with very little and then sending some links in soon hatched to just kill the tanks right away on the high ground and now the position of time is not looking so good all of a sudden it's looking a little bit more like a prison of course, the connections are pretty good into that little space, but time is still standing, still tough. Larva from Rogue was depleted to a quite significant amount, but the Palings flank will make short work of this aggressive position of time. And Rogue, meanwhile, expanding three times over here on the left side, saturating the bases, getting quick spread basically in the face of the third base of time I mean exactly every single moment of his opponent movement sorry I'm trying to take control of the map on the right side adrenaline gland soon to be finished as well as plus three carapace well just being started to be honest but well, that's probably going to be a time very soon for ultras to be a little bit more larva efficient for rogue Beautiful lean bane play all together in this series. Rogue fighting back in a position I didn't think it was possible. And an incredible run by. Last free melee also going to be started by time. He's trying to spread his army into equal parts, over here on the left side, right side, sorry going to be kind of complicated for time to defend this base especially with a big movement from Rogue going straight into the middle over here there's no Vipers, the Banelings gonna have a tough way walking in between so many tanks but in the end Rogue can support these losses time, not so much Concussive shells being started as well as a steadier production of Marauders to stop these buildings from, from getting that much value, since the tower goes down, 
We don't mind. We'll get a couple decent shots. 12 and for 3 kills. It's not too many, but not that little as well. Scan forward with time. Still trying to slow down crit spread, but over here, Rook finds another way in. This time it's the Orbital Command to be the bigger candidate from going down. These links have adrenaline glands, they do not have plus 3 plus 3 yet, but look at them go. Oh my god, the Blighted Vortress actually stays alive. Are we on the left side? There's a uh, naturally going down for Rook, which is uh, kind of decent actually. Overseers ensuring these Widow Mines do not get nasty surprise shots. Thanks going down, yeah, time is crumbling under the constant aggression of the Zerg player yet again. Finding its way on the Ike run and yet again ravaging through the economy of the Tevron player. There's one bunker over here trying to defend this location, but it's not gonna stay up as long as time wanted it to. Another full rally of units is about to go up for Rogue, while time is losing units basically as soon as they spawn. Rogue is going to be a little bit more careful about his movement forward, but he has full control of the map. He has been covering it in the purple ooze. And now time losing yet another base. Yet another stream of income. Gonna try to bite back some with the least stop down creep. But Rogue moving, moving on the right side. Oh, the Widow Mine placement just not good enough. Planetary Fortress is defending the economy of time as much as they can, but yeah, over here. The Widowmine shots might be decent, but there's just too much blue on this side of the map. Decent micro by time, but it just doesn't have enough units, and here comes the Vipers, ready to drop down the Blinding Clouds if needed. Parasitic Bombs on top of the Medivax, the Planetary Fortress going to be the last effort between Rogue and Victory, and it's not a good enough effort. The economy of time completely annihilated. His production is not looking good. 30 more links incoming. Rook is going to commit on another planetary fortress. He's going to get this around before the SCBs can get anywhere close to that. And here goes the third planetary fortress of the game. GG gets gold and Rook doubles, doubles it down. Getting 2 0 advantage in this best of 7. Again, a very different map, map from uh, the ones we've been playing on so far. Inside and out, on the longer side, even though rush distance is not that big, because of uh, a pretty straightforward way into the natural of your opponent. And of course, no like significant uh, stop on your way. Rocks are just covering the whole ramp over here, and in the other places are just creating choke points. Mostly curious to see if time decides to go again for the same build, even though it's not really working out for him to play the greedy game against Rogue, who's just being better at it than his opponent. It probably is a better idea to try and stop Rogue on his tracks rather than rather than match him into the late game. Into the rush into the late game. Also. But uh, then again, inside and out, bigger map than Waterfall. Could be interesting to see a little bit more defensive playstyle all the time. Even though it doesn't really suit him. So definitely not what I'm expecting. I'm expecting him to mix things up. Eh, he doesn't. It's a fair command center again. Trying to probably practice his pre command center playing. Makes sense. But this time, a little bit of a twist. Are we going to see. Attack lab over here. Probably. Yeah. Definitely going to be Banshee play. 
No, I'm not really expecting an early drop. Rogue, not really shaking things up. We've seen a clear lack of spore crawlers in the previous games. That might come back to home team. With that time, barely mixing things up, but yeah, still adding uh, something new to the mix. With the Banshee playing coming very soon. Rogue tends to get a little lair. I'm going to keep a little bit more attention. That is a uh, sport timing, cause uh, I don't think he did get him at all. Get him at all in the previous games, but well, maybe I'm mistaken. It does sound like probably got him, but I, I didn't really pay attention to it because there's there was no sky threat. But then again, he comes to the lair, and this is basically a moment in which you want to drop down those poor crawlers I was talking about. This is a little bit of an earlier lair compared to the previous games. Rogue probably reading that his opponent is switching things up, he's not seeing as many Hellions. He's thinking probably, yeah, he's gonna have more wrecks earlier on. Which is not really the point of this. With actually Banshees soon to come up and try and deal as much damage as possible. Where's the Banshee? Here it is. Uh, no Clock, by the way. It's just a standard Banshee. So no spore is needed as long as your Queen position is good and yeah. Queen positioning from Rogue is uh, kind of amazing over here. There's still a lot of dead air space this Banshee can walk into. Oh wow, this was almost a disaster. But the islands will be in the end meshed by both Queens and Lings. Banshee returning back home to be repaired. And yeah, you can see time actually just get into 5 racks. Doesn't really want to keep up with the Banshee play, he's not gonna get a cloak. He's just gonna try to keep it as a form in the side of his opponent. Getting one kill, probably on a quick tumor, not much more. Again, this uh, is kind of starting to look again like a carbon copy of game 1 and 2. Ooh, here comes something different. Rogue has a different breed on inside and out than he does on the other maps. He's gonna go for a Hydra then over here. Even though he's gonna go steal for plus 1, plus 1 melee carabas and centrifugal hooks. He's gonna drop down the Hydra then, probably reading this map as being a, a little bit more point control heavy than others so he's gonna try to maybe have lurkers at the ready with a little bit of a faster hive play infestation pit still not going up probably going up at 730 which is the quote unquote standard timing if you want to get into early well early like standard hive tech and hive tech is absolutely mandatory if you want to go for a lurker then Otherwise, lurkers are just. Let's be honest, they're just not good into Terran without their range upgrade. They just aren't. Seismic spines, of course. Groot spines in the making, meanwhile. For the Hydras to try and support anti air and maybe stop the tanks from uh, getting into some. Uh, Couple obnoxious locations, especially between these pillars. The rocks are gonna be broken down just under the watchful eyes of these overload over here. Rogue is gonna try and play against. Sorry, Tom is gonna try and play against this around, which is not really happening. Rogue uh, massing his units over here in the middle, waiting for more buildings to be made. Queen's trying to get a little bit of a conquer, but here comes a big movement in from Rogue. There's a lot of buildings which are not getting that good of a connection. And now he's only Hydras left behind over here. More and more Palings are incoming. The Hydras are gonna try to support them. But the pre spreads are very good for time. And there's no links to support this. 
It does look like these idols are not exactly the play from Rogue. And time is gonna try and abuse these. The tanks are moving forward and now it's gonna be an absolute disaster for a Rogue. So hard to hold this position. And the Hydra then going down sure does not help this hold. The other gen still stands. The concave is absolutely incredible for Rogue, but there's still so many queens in this concave that the Hydras cannot get in position. In the end, it does look like both players are losing so much, but losing queens does hurt more than losing tanks does. And you can see Rogue working with three queens is not exactly the best you were expecting. 12 more marines incoming for time. And Knight 7 Hydras in the making. This Hydra then is so close from going down. There's a couple links in position to keep it up. Oh, steam forward time still threatening that Hydra then. What a weird Hydra then positioning by the way. It's so vulnerable for <laughs> like tank over here. The sport crawler is about to go down as well and it will go down in the end. The Hydra then is next to go! Oh my goodness! 10 L. Oh no! Oh my goodness! Muscular augment so close from being finished! It does not finish! Denied by time. Yeah, muscular Augments was a key upgrade for Rogue. He needed to keep these Hydras as mobile as possible, ready to get in a concave at any moment's notice, and now they cannot do that. Hydra then plus Muscular Augments will take a little bit over two minutes to be completed, both of them at the current point in the game for Rogue. That is absolutely a no-go, nothing you can support, you cannot support losing resources for two minutes doing absolutely anything. Here comes the pain leads, a much better investment for that Vespin gas. And as you can see, actually getting dream connections on the left side, but there's just too many Marines, the tanks go down, more pain leads, trying to get connections, trying to get a flank, but all of the Hydras are going down one after the other. Lean starting to get in position, but another steam forward from time will make short work of them. And here comes the tank, sieged up in the scariest possible position, right in the front. Lean sending in, going on top of the tank, actually getting the clear off. There's not a lot of marines over here, but of course, time is going to support this location with constant stream of units. The Inlids are desperately trying to get connections and they completely fail at doing so. Rogue acknowledges time is the winner of game number 3. Moondance is one of the two pocket based maps. Uh, differently from Stargazers, the pocket map over here, the pocket base over here is uh, an off base, 12 workers on minerals and uh, 3 on Vespin geysers making this a 15 workers base without any significant other deal. Well, in contrast to a 22 workers standard base and of course halving the Vespin income which is most likely going to be the most important resource the later the game goes. So pocket base, if you're expanding can be decent if you want to play aggressive and don't really need the the, the six Vespin geysers. Otherwise, you're just better off expanding to your normal third and try to start it from there. Then after that, maybe you can get the base. But it, it, it just counts as a half base. Nothing less, nothing more. And Mundance is honestly not that complicated to defend as well. These maps are almost all of them are pretty easy to defend, especially all of them being very complicated to traverse in the middle, unless you get map control in some uh, significant way. Again, this wasn't like it's just Reaper and Slings. So I don't know what I was expecting, but we do see fourth time in a row, time going straight into third command center. We've seen the Banshee play do absolutely nothing. 
but uh, maybe time will add a different twist to it. We're seeing again the Starport play. We're probably gonna see Attack Club soon. We're probably gonna see Banshee soon. This time, maybe with Cloak? Who knows? Moondance is kind of crazy for Sky units. Ooh, that's an early lair. That's as early as you can get a lair without skipping Metabolic Boost. And with one single Vespin Geysers. Yeah, that's super early. Bailing that's going up as well. It does feel like Rogue has something in mind. You don't want to get that early of a lair otherwise. I'm not expecting Nidus because Moondance is a terrible Nidus map. Like, if you get a Nidus over here, you have to walk up two ramps. It's kind of terrible. The Azure is kind of tiny, and so is the main. It's just not a good Nidus map. It's hard to traverse in the middle, but easier to, tra to traverse on the sides, so you don't really need Nidus to supply. I'm not expecting Nidus out of this. That's the thing I was stressing most. But what am I expecting out of this? I don't know. Rogue playing on two bases, he definitely has something in mind. He's a two base spire from Rogue. Probably gonna try and take the pocket base. I can't see two base spire working with just four Vespin Geysers against an opponent who, who's been going for early for command center every single game. Like, this is the correct counter to it, the best counter, but you want to go with it on three base. At least two and a half, right? You can deal outstanding amounts of damage, especially since Time has uh, skipped a little bit of his production to go for uh, an early starport. Which is not really amounting to anything. There's one Viking in the skies, but yeah, that's basically it. The Overseer is gonna try and get some vision over here. Probably the early Overseer is there to make Time afraid of a possible night display. Like, this pathing on this Overseer screams, hey! I'm dropping a Nidus, come kill my Overseer. Of course, Rogue is also going to get a little bit of scouting information out of this. But uh, given the information that he has Lair and seeing no Nidus at all, Rogue Tiny is going to immediately have the information that this is a Spire play, because there's nothing else you can really do with this. And he's gonna drop down those Missile Turrets before the Mutas even come to life. Still no 4th base, well, 3rd base from Rogue, since he's uh, still playing on 2.5. Not all of Vespin guys, guys uh, being uh, collected, as you can see, by Rogue. Those are adding up. We're not gonna see plus 1 yet. Oh, here he comes. Fire attacks incoming. These Mutas are gonna be finally spotted by the marines but time is gonna try and play aggressively there's not a lot otherwise bailing speed is still in the makings there's not a lot of bailings there's not a lot of queens actually playing with the one less archery for a long time does hurt your queen production quite a lot the mutas are uh, disregarding his offense by time they're just gonna try to walk on the other side of the map rogue knows that he's not really the best spot anyway, as long as he can get these meters into doing something. But the meters are kind of doing nothing so far. Two base play are incredibly complicated to make work. So I can see Rogue being a little bit too afraid to move forward, especially after showing his hand. The meters do not actually sneak away. No, Vikings and Medivacs in disguise to show their movements to time. Winning speed soon to be finished. Some trivial looks just now being completed. Crypt tumors are gonna be killed. With time hiding in between these side blockers. Probably gonna try to break down those rocks, or maybe not. Not afraid of choke points at all. Rogue. Gonna add more and more mutas to the mix. Plus one, plus one halfway through. They'd be lagging behind, of course, due to his uh, early tech play. But with the plus one flyer attack, seem to be finished. Such a key upgrade for these mutas to start suddenly become uh, a main threat even in a heads up fight. You don't mind. 
not gonna get a, a dream shot at all. But there's an armory, so this Vita Mine is still up and standing. With uh, Rogue waiting for an Overseer to join his mutas, most likely. And here he comes. Overload speed, kind of mandatory if you want to play this kind of style, and you can see Rogue acknowledging it and getting his overload speed very soon. The first story is about to spawn as well. A little bit of a stalemate between the two players, but Rogue not really able to gain the map control he wanted to get with his Munis, but still being a, a trump card, being a, a threat to time, who's not really playing aggressive himself, but he's getting all the pieces of the puzzle together, and uh, overall he's gonna have a much better army. Connections are kind of great for Rogue. With uh, even a small amount of painlings. Of course these are l -bats, so they're just gonna tend for ages if time gets the position right. But uh, with uh, so many marines dead, time uh, needs to probably back off knowing that the Mutas could hunt him down if he makes one aggressive play that is not really good at all. Infantry weapons plus two and infantry armor plus two is going to be completed as well as vehicle plating. So now the army of time is much scarier than it was before, soon to be maxed out, oh, actually maxed out. The mainlings are gonna get easy connections over Hellbots, Marauders and Marines, but the Tors are of course the scariest part of this. Station behind, trying to get control over the Mutas, the Widow Mines do not get the dream shots that time was looking for with the mainlings getting some crazy connections over them. Just one Muta, one um, Muta Mine barely alive. And there's another Widowman shot from the low ground to the high ground, actually. Killing 14 of the units of Rogue. Time maxing out again. The last one, Infantry Armory, is about to be, well, halfway through. The Midas trying to shark around, trying to get some connections. Well, not connections, trying to get some flanks. With a plus two flyers attack. Soon to be finished as well. There's still Widowmans on this ramp. This is a, a scary position to hold. The Bainlings are trying to get forward and they will get some decent connections. The last few on the right side will get completely obliterated by one middle mine. Here comes more Bainlings that was stationed behind. There's still Widowmine shots available, but these are Betrayer Widowmine shots, killing more Marines than Zerglings. And Rogue will clear this location. Not without a lot of losses, by the way. Still losing a lot of Vespin onto Bainlings, which is Vespin is hard to spare, with Mutas still being so important. And being the main part of the army as well. I've seen many mutas die in this game, five of them. Without really doing much. I have not seen Rogue like getting in a, any aggressive position so far. Like look at this. He basically doesn't know anything. Like, finally these changelings, moving with the army of time, are gonna get quite some good scouting information. Especially going to see time move over here on the left side with his army. Prompting the mutas to move into the right. This is a. Uh, this kind of plays often go. Oh no. Ooh. Nice. This, uh, this kind of plays often go. Unseen. But this was a, a clever play by Rogue. Finally trying to at least find something with his mutas. Not managing to do so. Due to an uh, unfortunate spawn of a Thor right in that location. But. The idea was there, and that is uh, exactly what I was expecting from Rogue. Because in this locate in this position, you need to have some kind of good ideas to break through. Otherwise, time it's probably just gonna run away again. Change this get uh, another little bit of a glimpse of the army of time while the Tours are trying to chase down the mutas. Hive incoming is gonna be especially important to match the Tours with Vipers. There's a lot of pain leads. this is a complicated location to attack into, the free spreads are very good for time and uh, Rogue looks like he lost a little bit more than he wanted. But there's still so many pain leads in his main army that he doesn't really have to be afraid too much. Probably leans are a little bit, be little bit better than pain leads in this position. You can see these pain leads doing absolutely nothing. It comes another rally, another movement forward, but yeah, these pain leads are not doing anything. There's basically more Mediox and Marines at this stage. The Taurus are kind of going down. These are decent connections. This door is very bruised, by the way. More and more Bailings in the makings, more lanes in the makings as well. 
Where are the mutas? It's only 17 mutas, by the way. Plus, e plus two flyer. This is not great. But time yet again tries to break through probably the most unbreakable position in the game right now. Changelings will be killed by the Widowmine. But the Widowmine will lose his life basically for nothing. For a little bit of energy. Because we'll try to get past the tours, we'll get a free volley on top of them. One changeling is gonna get on top of the army of time. Gonna be snapped as well. One time decides to attack into another spot, but oh, this tour is so bruised. Gonna be repaired by a couple of SCVs. Here comes a big flank with the mutas, with the rest of the army of Rogue funneling in the middle. And these bailings are still to be a big, big threat. Oh my goodness. This is a complete. Disaster for basically both players. Both of them losing all the most important parts of their army. But yeah, the links are a little bit more expendable, I guess. Yeah, these mutas have done nothing this game, guys. Absolutely. Look at the amount of lost Vespin gas on the side of Rogue. This is crazy. 115 billions and 19 mutas to just stay alive. Right now, Adrenaline Glance is in the making, it's Ultra Cavern to make a little bit better use of Larva, which is not in the best stage right now, especially with the Rogue not playing with the crazy amount of bases he's played uh, in the previous games. He still has so many Bane leads. It, it does feel like it was the correct choice to snap out of Mutas to go into mass Bane leads, but... Yeah, it, it's hard to justify the two base play at this stage. It, it does end up being a field play overall for the Zerg player, who's uh, now going back to basics. Adrenaline Glance, plus three, plus three links, Ultra Cover to support Larva a little bit more efficiently. Oh, this Widowmine was about to get the jackpot. Blue Flaming Nighter. To add up some more run by potential. As well as Cloak, I think, yeah, for Ghosts. To maybe add a couple nukes to the mix. Adrenaline Glance, of course, is going to be the biggest threat out of them all. Uh, is there Lib. Oh my god, a big move forward under this Liberator. Which is, uh. Honestly, I, I didn't expect this work so well. There's only Tours and Liberators left standing, and it does feel like Time Bones to just move out of there. It's already a spire up, a couple corruptors are gonna be added into the mix pretty much freely since uh, Rogue is supporting his army with crazy amounts of Vespin gas. Yeah, I wanted to check for Liberator's range which is not there yet. I don't think there's a fusion core at all. Yeah, there's no fusion core as well. So, no Liberator's range available. Blue Flame up and running as well as plus. Two vehicle weapons. Plus three, plus three in the making for Rogue. Meanwhile, a little bit of a run by. We'll get some kills. I don't know where. But yeah, on the top right side, this base is going to be very complicated to hold. You can see Rogue basically deciding to sack. Or not really, he's gonna get a full rally in of Bane Leans and Leans alike. The spreads over the Widowman shots are kind of amazing from Rogue. This was a crazy fight. Dodging so many Widowman shots left and right. How can he keep on doing this? Lean Bane control in the hands of Rogue. Looking absolutely pristine in this series. He's losing a little bit to Corruptors, to Liberators, but the Corruptors will make short work of this Liberator on the left side. Which, yeah, seven workers down. is honestly more than I was expecting these Liberators to do. Once Corruptors join the fray. A few Ultras gonna be added to the mix. Rogue needs to stay Larva efficient, he needs to keep Larva up for the next few fights. Since he's working with a mostly Ling and Bane. Needs that to be a thing. Plus three, plus three, soon to be finished. Yeah, like, he didn't even have plus three, plus three in that fight. This control absolutely great. Shockwave EMP upgrade, not really the best matchup to get it. The Marauders are gonna be a tank wall. 
for the rest of the army to support it behind these. The archers are getting ahead, are getting a few snaps on top of them, but you can see the army of Bailnitz is rolling through everything, and now it's up to Mutas, uh, sorry, to Ultras and Lynx to clear up the rest. You can see how important larva efficiency is so far for Rogue, and adding more links to the mix to support his bulk of Ultras is definitely going to be the play. Smart servers just being completed by time. A second after losing all of its stores. Not exactly what he wanted. Quick spread on the right, not really looking great, but Rogue is uh, keeping control of this location anyhow. Lots of buildings in production. Rook trying to take this base over here, which is not that complicated to defend, by the way. It's just a little bit uh, off the way. Time of replenishing his army as well. Yeah, we don't mind shots, not really that great. Gold weapons plus three incoming. There's a little bit uh, of a uh, wrong disposition of units from Rogue, which will cost him this fight. Sadly for him, with Ultras being in the back instead of not on the front. 64 more uh, leans incoming now that the uh, ghosts are on the field. These ultras are basically father. Oh my goodness, the Bailing connections though. Killing so many ghosts, killing so much of the army of time. These Bailings, my goodness. They just do not stop coming. And again, Rook trying to work with larva efficiency, still adding ultras to the mix, even though the biggest threat right now is just those ghosts. Still playing in planetary fortress is uh, basically impossible to break down without a like absolutely stomping a fight. We're trying to move a little bit on the left side, trying to actually go up this ramp. This is a uh, kind of a scary play. Here goes the lead. They have plus three, plus three, and a gentle glance. So the planetary fortress is going down, but at what cost? Uh, that happened. It does feel like Rogue made a mistake in moving his army around and half of his army went up ramp and uh, at that point he was just like, yeah, like, let's flip it. Uh, and just decided to engage into that. So uh, at least he traded those things for something. You can't see Ultra moving forward so many snipes being channeled on top of it. The links are gonna go on top of these tanks while the Bane links do detonate on uh, whatever they can find. And they find a couple ghosts, but these ghosts are just not dying. How healthy are they? Like, oh, ghosts are so good, man. It's hard to not think of ghosts as the best unit in the game, like right now. The Bailings are gonna try to commit, but yeah, like, these ghosts absolutely stomp this game, and time is gonna get the tied up score. I love Cosmic Sapphire, it looks incredibly pretty. It's super, super weird. It's one kind of map we honestly never had. It's somewhat similar to... I don't remember the name of the map. Hardwire, that's the name. Somewhat, like, at least in playstyle-wise. Also resembling some of... Uh, a little bit of an older map. I don't remember the name, one of 2019, I think. But uh, all in all... Really like the Zemnaga thing over here. All in all, it does feel like this map is one of the oddest one out of the book. It's just so weird to play into. Like, you don't really want to expand into a linear pattern because, like, you will never go into this base. Yes, it's a golden, but yeah, you're not going there. Well, on the other side, it's super risky, it's super open, and there's so many ways to get into that. But there's a rich vest being geyser. Oh. All of this, and there's also a watchtower blocked by side blockers with tons of dead airspace behind it in a singular position, not being mirrored on the other side, which is actually that space. 
Like, this is such a hard map to traverse, such a hard map to play into. It's, it's fun. It's fun to watch, and I can't wait to see more on this map. Okay, I'm getting into the main. But again, like, this is a, just a standard dance. Time saving up his resources again. He has 400. You know what I'm expecting. Here he comes. It's going to be for the fifth time in a row a free command center play. But after the first few games, it does look like time has adapted to his opponent a little bit better than Rogue Gate. Rogue. Sitting too confident after the first few games and probably slipping a little bit too much in the subsequent two with an early Hydra Den and an early Spire Play both kind of doing nothing. Especially the Spire Play. The Spire Play did zero. It did not grant him map control. It did not get him uh, economical damage to his opponent. It did not get him advantages in fight. It did not snipe any medivacs. It did nothing. It was good for one big fight, baiting Widowman shots on top of the army of his opponent, and that was it. It didn't, need, didn't do anything else. Quick spread is going to be slowed down a little bit by time. Information being collected by Rogue. Seeing actually this tech lab researching something out of everything. Like, you do know this is Blue Flaming Nether. It can't be anything else. Here comes a Roach Warrior for Rogue. Beautiful, beautiful play. Oh, Crypt Tumor is going to be killed. Actually, this is. Uh, you think you can go through here? Can't you? Uh, no, this is better. Yeah, I think you can. Uh, can you? Are we gonna? Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Alright. Rogue acknowledges it. Infernal Pre-Igniter being completed. Roach Warren is up, though. There's still not much else. Oh. Their grenade ensures these aliens go through and oh my goodness, the armor is up by the way, this could turn into well but at any moment's notice. Oh, everything is burning down to a crisp. Oh, they're getting into the main. Oh, is the armor up by the way? Yes it is. Oh no, the economy of Rogue is being burnt down. These Elbats have, these are aliens have yet to turn into Elbats by the way, yeah, they do not want to fight against these many queens. They're trying to dance around the edges, 22 workers down. Time doesn't have a lot of workers himself, he's gonna lose all of these aliens, but yeah, that is damage guys, it is real damage. 24 total. Four Winomines ready to be dropped around. Drilling close is incoming as well. Oof. Not going to be easy to recover from that. It's not like he's behind in work as he's still on equal footing as his opponent. But time is just now dropping down his first command center over here. He has mules especially. He's gonna add two more Vespin geysers with refineries. But my goodness. That damage was looking... Oof. This is kind of a unique play as well. Early blue flame into Helen Rambai. And now he's going to heavy factory play. Either Hellions and tanks being added to the mix. We don't mind going over here in the natural, stopping the economy from going up altogether. We don't mind shots going over here, not really getting much. But of course, with Drilling Clones. With, not with Drilling Clones, sorry. With the armory being up, you need an overseer to spot him. It's gonna take a while. 
They do not recharge their shots, but yeah, there's still ways to go. Ooh. There's one roach over here going at it. More Hanlins being collected into Medivax, ready to be dropped around double factory incoming and time. Whew. That has to be one of the most annoying ways to play this matchup ever. With time trying to cheese his way, well not really cheese, to sneak his way into match point. Oh, the blue flame aliens do get one kill. Red drop around. Push Rogue left and right, trying to blindside him with Vikings joining the field as well. To try and kill a couple overlords and ensure Rogue has no idea what is happening. A little bit of a early infestation pit considering the losses that Rogue was getting so far. Will ensure Rogue a better attack than his opponent to counter his uh, factory play as soon as possible before he sets roots. Since there's already quite a lot of tanks on the field, and there's only going to be more. The Vikings are gonna kill a couple of those left and right. This is especially good at stopping map control from being taken by Rogue. Oh, aliens get into the middle line, and my goodness. How do they always find damage? Blue Flame aliens are just that crazy unit that keeps on getting something. They're just like Zealot Rumbies. They're that good, even better, when it comes to just killing workers. And they're just as expendable as, as uh, Zealots. Oh, here they go. Killing creep like it's not business. The wall is down. And getting past it is just a commodity. Drones will be burnt to crisp. Setting the count to 51. Ooh. Yeah, that is uh, deadly. You don't really want to break down these rocks, otherwise the aliens have an even easier way into your base. The changeling will get a good grasp of what is going on on, on the other side of the map. Plus three vehicle weapons is incoming for time, as well as the first few tours being added into the mix. I'm feeling content with a 10 count. Rogue has been recovering from his drone losses. But... Like, his quick spread is decent as well. Maybe I mean... I've been counting Rogue out a little bit too much. It does feel like the Army of Time is just... So much better than his. Like, Rogue's supply is heavily inflated by Ravagers, but... You cannot get anything better than Ravagers until you get Infestors and Rulers, which are... Kind of complicated to get at this stage, and free vipers are just better earlier on. Oh, we don't mind drop on the left, on the right. Sorry, uh, yeah, it, it will just never happen. This poor single yeah, but we'll just get a little bit of cutting. We're actually killing three drones over on the oh, another uh, drop. We'll ensure these albats get a couple more drones killed. Ooh. That hurts to watch, as a fellow Zerg player, that really hurts to watch. 25 Bailings in the making, Adrenaline Glance is incoming as well as Grand Carver's level 2. As you can see, a crit spread out of Rogue will ensure he has always pretty much perfect information about the movements of his opponent. It is such a tough army to break down, you need to send rallies over rallies of units over here. You need to sacrifice your army and then replace it. The Ravagers will try to get a little bit of a concave, but yeah, they, they cannot really get too close to those tanks. They get control of the Watchtower, and there's already a dream position. Yeah, the Vikings will chase down the Vipers, even with Parasitic Bombs over them. This is so crazy good for time. He's gonna sacrifice two Vikings for a lot of energy and killing down one Viper. Now the Tors are moving forward, ready to engage. Here comes the Concave out of Rogue. Here goes the flank with the Elbas trying to pull Rogue around. The Army of Time is faltering to stay up in that location with the... The Ravager Biles eating on top of everything, but this is not 
an army you can support that much as the rogue. Adrenal glance finished as well. Here you go, the Ravagers moving forward, trying to snipe down the tanks. Then positioning has not been great, but yeah, like right now, Rogue just loses a couple of rounds just for nothing. His tank is still up with just one health due to the SCVs repairing it before he went down. And it does feel like time wants to repair the tank, not the Medivax, but yeah. More and more rounds just being added into the mix. Plus three vehicle is about to go up as well. Plus two missile and plus two melee incoming for Rogue instead. The Vipers are about to get into position. The Concave is really good from Rogue. No blinding clouds, just the Parasitic Bombs going on top of the Vikings to stop them from sniping down the Vipers. This is the first spot out of Rogue. He needs to kill those Vikings before he can drop down the blinding clouds. Well, a couple SCVs will also die in this location. The Vikings are still looking for the Vipers. Oh, oh yeah, you don't want to lose Vikings that way. Oof. And then it's gonna try to make a run by going. Grid spread is gonna ensure Rogue has Queens in that position to stop the Adams from going past the defenses and actually being sniped down by the Lings and Ravages alike. On creep, they still move fast enough. Still, this location is pretty complicated to break. A rogue that's no surround potentially, you just need to build up a concave and you need to send your you need to send your vipers in to drop down a blinding cloud, but this many towards is so complicated to control the vipers. It does feel like this is probably the moment for Infested Brutalots switch in. But Rogue doesn't really feel confident doing that in this stage. Not against a plus three plus three max out mech army. So he's in a very good position right now. I do love his army composition, I do love his splits, I do love his position. Overall, just in... Oh, yeah, this Widowmind didn't really get the best shot. Oh, yeah. Ooh. 25 SCVs just casually died for no reason at all. Bailing Rumbys. Blindside in Terrence. Since 2010. Here comes a couple of ducks. These doors will be trapped in between the bulk of the army of Rogue. More Ravagers being added into the mix, but time is slowly but steadily. Leapfrogging his tank forward. Blinding clouds being spread everywhere. And it does look like in the end, Rogue will be able to survive a little bit more. Where are the Vipers? Did the Vipers die? Oh my goodness. Did the Vipers die? No, they didn't. Where are the Vipers? Grab the Vipers, Rogue. Alright, they're, they're recollecting their energy. They used like a million blinding clouds. Double Spire, that's what I wanted to see. The tanks are sieged up. The Ravagers are gonna try to build up a concave in the rain piles down everywhere. But Rogue's piles just were not on point this game so far. I don't really see these piles doing enough. They're trying to snap down tanks, Ravagers alike. Yeah, the Medivox go down, but the Medivox are kind of useless at this stage. Vikings being added to the mix. To stop those Vipers even better. Time showing something I didn't know he was this proficient at. With this mech play being extremely good at breaking down the defenses of Rogue time after time. Really wasn't expecting him to have such a clean mech play. The Vipers are gonna try to drop down the Parasity Bombs on top of the Vikings and then retreat backwards. Parasity Bombs reluctantly going to be enough to kill both of these vikings here goes the ravagers here goes the roaches but there's no vipers to support them and they're just gonna be death fodder to the shots of tanks and tours alike over here on the top right there's nothing to defend time is moving forward at last the ravager x do spawn but these doors are just not going down they're dodging piles the tanks are supporting the location it does look like rogue decides to Final his army on the right side, but the tanks at the tours are a little bit too much. This army of the Zerg player is severely bruised, but so is the one out of the Terran. 16 more roaches incoming, but the location that time has built up over, over here 
and the third base of Rogue looks completely unbreakable. Units funnel down in the rally point, just to be slaughtered. Time gets to match point. But what can I say? Like, time adapting so well into this series also um, kind of shows one of the weaknesses, maybe, out of Rogue's play. One that can be exploited in the future is a uh, lack of adaptability in a series is uh, not finding his grip in. He changed a lot of stuff in the last three games, playing with Hydras first, with Spire and Midas after, and then with Roach and Ravagers to try and play against Mech. And last game was pretty much always in control of time. Rogue did get a couple good fights, but he never managed to get a transition into anything else. And if you don't transition out of Roach Ravagers, like, a maxed out mech army with plus three plus three is just gonna kill you. There's no way out of it. Like, you, you can fight, you can have the perfect fight. You're just not gonna win against that army. As soon as he lays X, you need something else. Roaches and Ravagers are just not enough. So, will Rogue finally find a way to adapt to his opponent, or will time find the four in a row to grant him the victory? That's the question here on Tropical Sacrifice. Tropical Sacrifice requires you to adapt to your opponent and play somewhat differently. That's a requirement to play this map. Because it's so weird, you cannot really just play your standard game. You need to have something different mixed in. Either being of, uh, defensively to try and hold this absolute nightmare of a base to hold, not like the other bases anything any easier due to how hold how different how difficult it is to hold this ramp. Or you just play Uber Agro with Roaches. And none of those two things are exactly optimal for a Zerg player. Making this an awkward map to play as a Zerg, especially with creep being somewhat complicated to spread between the bases. And generally, Zerg players do not want their main base and their fur base to be so far. They don't want to be their main base and their natural base to be so far. Due to bases being uh, the font of productions for them. Of course, it's a free command center play with Starport this time. And Banshee being added. No Banshee cloak, as you can see. Get in, and then get out, try to get some information, maybe kill, snipe, some crypt tumors. Not really found it a way in though. Blue Chamber incoming from Rogue, looking like he wants to reset to his uh, Limbane play again without adding anything else to the mix. You probably seem to see Al there at a super super standard timing alongside double upgrades. A little bit later than usual, actually, but yeah, that's his map for you. And it's gonna be a little bit harder to deal with. For Rogue due to having to deal with three different locations at once, all of them being very far from one each other. From one another, sorry. So they're gonna move off this ramp to try and push time away. It's not getting three racks at a time. Probably going to be a fourth one as well, bringing the total to five. Oh, actually, the total is already five. And just a single Banshee is probably not gonna do much. It's already dead. I don't know where it died, but it's already dead. It did not kill anything, I think. Unless there's one single drone died. No, it didn't kill anything. Belinda's making this a full, well, 
a Wolof. That needs only one queen over here. With a rogue still being afraid that many more Hellions are about to come. But after he's counting, as they're seeing red flames get out of those Hellions and non blue flames, he's probably gonna be pretty content with just playing his average game. Time playing much more aggressive. Trying to funnel actually the aliens over here means so much creep. The lanes will try to get us around. The, gre the grenade out of the Reaper is very good though. And so is the movement behind of the aliens. The rest of the army has been catching up their skew tanks with these. They can siege up behind the rocks. The queens, of course, are going to be so complicated to deal with. But that's basically all that's going to be complicated to deal with. The tanks are in a crazy aggressive spot. Over in this choke point, the aliens are going to make short work of whatever is left. The marines are moving forward, but here comes the bane lanes. And that's exactly what Rogue needed. One tank is still up and standing, but it goes down. The marines are steaming forward yet again. Now they have the support of the medivac infantry armor. And infantry weapons, plus one, plus one, about to be finished. That's exactly when time wanted it to complete. There's so many queens over here. Creep is going to be cancelled. There's no connection between main and fourth. More crypt humans are going to be killed. The quick spread of Rogue has been completely reset on the side of his ramp. This is not what Rogue wanted, but time needs to be careful. There's a big run by incoming, but the army of time is just being spawning out of his production. You're scouting forward, but one single link is gonna see everything that is happening. I'm still playing extremely carefully while Rogue is spending on double locations. Reading it out, feeling confident yet again. Because in three in a row did not shake him. And he's again looking to play the aggressive way with run buys. Time thinks the same and he's moving in. Two tanks, countless marines and five medivacs to support it. Swift move forward, these marines will try to get on top of the queen, they will get a kill on the queen. These banelings will get connection, but not much more. The rocks are still up and standing, but not for long, another tank shot and the, these rocks will go down. They're still fighting the choke point though, time needs to be careful, here comes the banelings. The rocks broke down, just when it was needed. Meanwhile on the other side of the map you can see time losing basically all of its economy. There's three tanks over here, the queens need to be very careful. The links are going to be retreated back home and they dealt enough damage with 28 workers going down. And now these marines are going to be finding themselves surrounded. The queen's going on top of the medivax. This might be a GG timing for time, to be completely honest with you. Half the economy of his opponent, he lost the main battle and Rogue is moving forward yet again with his links. Ready to snipe something else. This planetary purchase is never completing. And now... His base needs to lift up in the skies. To links. Burrow down over here to maybe get some scouting information at a later stage. Scans going left and right by time to spot anything happening. On the side of the Zerg player. Hive is incoming. Rogue in a commanding position. 30 workers ahead. Does not have a crazy army. But he has plus 2 plus 2. His opponent cannot say the same. Another move forward by time, he's a little bit in a desperate position right now. These medivacs do not have a lot of energy on them. There's not a lot of pain links with this, to be honest. Like, this is only links. Can they win the battle? Yes, they can. There's not enough energy on these medivacs. And the widow mines are a little bit too few and spread out. Rogue gets another fight, basically only with links. And again, this planetary is never happening. Oh, maybe it is. I don't know. Yeah, maybe it is happening. Maybe I was too front with it. Now, there's one thing we have to consider. That being Larva. Being hard to come by if you lose too many links. Three Vipers are in the makings. Trying to make these battles a little bit cleaner on the side of Rogue. But time has not been really recovering his lost army. Rogue playing uber aggressively. This Widowman is seconds away from getting his shot back. But it will drop it in a little bit of a useless spot. It did, funnily enough, kill two birdlings by chance. But 
that was just fun, you know, really useful. Adrenaline Glance, incoming. Time actually trying to get a little bit of drop action on the right side. Got some Widow Mines. Ooh, good shot. Over here in the middle, a little bit of a funnel of time and trying to get on top of the ramp. Losing a couple of Marines without really doing much else. The Widow Mines will get a couple of shots, but not much more. The Mediok is super, super bruised. Meanwhile, another Widow Mine drop is about to happen on the top side instead. Liberator just being added into mix time, trying to play slow, trying to get siege stuff. While Rogue is trying to get plus 3 plus 3 and Adrenal Glance a little bit earlier than his opponent. Hydra then is going to be added to mix, probably for Lurkers, as soon as possible with Hive already being a factor. Alright. What are we looking at right now? Another Widowman drop over here, not really going to get much Adrenal Glance. Adrenal glance about to be completed. Quick spread being shoot away a little bit more. The rogue expanding unscouted over here on the top side. Bit of my shot, we'll get a decent connection. How many do we kill? Like five. It's decent. Rook kind of slipped a little bit. Missed probably the chance to end the game. He's in an outstanding position anyway. His economy is a uh, out of this planet, and he has so many bases to choose from, to suck, saturate, hold. He has a couple of important decisions to make, his army is moving on the right side while time is uh, currently steaming over here. There's uh, a couple of bailings uh, about to spawn, the Hydras are just not gonna do much in this location. Meanwhile, over here, another archer is going to be killed, not cancelled. The Bailings do spawn. Oh, Betrayer Widowmine kills a Medivac. Not a full one, but still. Yeah, time is spread a little bit too far and a little bit too thin, it seems. There's a lot of Widowmines over here. They're gonna get miserable shots on a couple of uh, links. So many Bailings streaming forward, chasing down Marines to the end of the world. They're gonna be spreading around, but there's more Bailings. Then there is Marines, and this is a huge choke point. The Marauders will hold it, but for how long? The Widow Mines will drop the shots. But Rogue is already maxed out. And time is slugging 70 supplies behind. And another run by happening. And Rogue bringing us to game number 7. For the last game to rule them all. Set number 7, Deciders, Ace, whatever you want to call it, here in the top right hand corner, playing for Dragon Phoenix Gaming. It's Rogue. His opponent in the top left hand corner instead, playing for Kaizi Gaming. Make some noise for time. Alright, Sargazers. Pocket natural. Just is a uh, 20 mineral fields to mine from. These are 40 mineral fields, by the way. So it's not easy to break through them. And then again, this ramp is uh, uh, just identical to the main base ramp. Rush distance is not the highest, it's not the lowest, it's a little bit in the middle. There's no obstacles between you and the natural of your opponent, especially with uh, six ramps leading into the natural. So you cannot control them all and making this natural very complicated to hold, especially with the choke point being so close to the archery, not to the base. So it's a weird month. You have a pocket base, but you have an incredibly hard to deal to hold a natural. I've, uh, I've heard people uh, complaining this map was basically like, um, a static part 2, but it really isn't. Static had a ramp to your natural, making the side play a little bit better. Uh, static had uh, inhibitor zones and the watchtower, which was uh, very complicated to deal with. Like, this is a little bit easier. So, this is a much more aggressive version of static. Static led us to some... Uh, Insanely long games. Uh, same with Year Zero, which is uh, which was uh, much bigger than this map is. 
much more funneled down the middle than this is, which is instead funneled down the bottom corners. And uh, he did have a ramp as well. And the main base was a uh, bigger with uh, no pocket natural. All right, again, seventh game in a row. Time goes for the free command center play. It has not been disappointing in the last four games, even though time ended up losing one of them. Due to the stubbornness of Rogue, mostly. Just insane defensive play so far from Rogue in that game. In all of the games, honestly. Like, most of them he just crumbled to the uber aggression of time. Not much happening. We're just in the Times tech waiting room, basically, with Rogue just probably gonna reset to basics. Let's do Rex already. Uh, wouldn't be surprised to see a fair one or a starport. Like, both of them are good choices. It's gonna be a starport with a 2 1 1 play, the one we've been seeing in the last game and the one in three games ago, basically. Probably gonna see a Banshee, I don't know. Like Steam started this early, yeah, probably it's just gonna be drops. Is this a reactor? Yes, it's a reactor. It's just gonna be two with two many of drops. Very standard play out of a older playbook, I'd say. And then we'll try to gain control of this ramp with Queen Spin Station to ensure nothing climbs into the natural. Rogue fails to get uh, any important scouting information over here. Just seeing the two wrecks and uh, Tech Club researching. It's gonna probably prompt him to believe in this is going to be some kind of, of uh, Steam Marines drop. Armor is incoming. We don't really see the double Evo Chamber play that Rogue as accustomed us to. We're gonna see a lair into Banelin Nest. Much more. Uh, by the book play, especially alongside the fourth base being taken immediately after. We want to see, yeah, that's what I wanted to see. We want to see a spire being taken with these many Vespian geysers. So, that is the play out of Rogue. This is an amazing spire map, and I do like this uh, standard spire play by Rogue much more than I did like the other times, especially since this is the natural counter to triple command center before. Starport. Absolutely love this. This can be extremely deadly in the hands of Rogue, especially. Uh, well, let, let's keep it to basics. Why is uh, free base spire a good play? Well, six guys are spire, I should say. Uh, the best play against command center. Because command center early on, free command center, uh, absolutely nullifies the weakness of the spire play being being extremely vulnerable at that span of time between 6.30 and 7.30. Basically, the span of time in which you have to work with just like 10 muters and mostly links and nothing else because Centrivial Oaks is not finished yet. And you don't have enough bane links on the field anyway. While your opponent has tanks, has marines, has widow mines, has a lot of stuff on the field. If you go for the triple command center play, your opponent is gonna have just much less stuff available for him, prompting these defensive play into being much much easier for Rogue, kind of nullifying probably one of the weakest points in the whole Zerg build pattern. This is the moment in which the Zerg is at its, is at its weakest and it's not a moment time can really capitalize upon, making the Spire play extremely good due to how well it scales into the later stages and how absolutely obnoxious can this Mutus be. As you can see, these medivacs are basically a non-factor. 
Uh, free Widowmine drop is still going to happen, but yeah, the, the Widowmines are... Oh, actually, the armor is spinning. Oh, yeah, these Widowmines did much more than they should have. Rob didn't really split his muters away, waiting for the OC to finish to kill these few Widowmines in that location. Widowmines over here will also get a couple drones killed before the Spore Cooler finishes and spells the end of those... Few widow mines. Time ready to drop again. This time it's Marines sending them into the top with two overloads actually spotting everything happening over here. Again, Rook playing a little bit too passively with his uh, mutas. Not exactly what I was expecting. Time absolutely for Fanny, the natural pocket. I do love this play. He acknowledges mutas are completely impossible to deal with in this base unless you get like a million missile turrets, which is a complete waste since you're going into Widow Mines and Tours anyway. And he's just gonna decide to deal with another base. Yeah, there's a little bit of a platoon station in that location. Yeah, double Widow Mines make getting into that base completely impossible. Rogue is getting to a huge economy count due to his economy being uh, almost completely. Ooh. Crazy with a man shot. Almost completely unchecked. His army though is just not the greatest. Plus one player attacks. It's just over halfway through. Doesn't really have an outstanding amount of mutas. His infestation pit is gonna be later as well. He has so much economy though. Like he is getting control of the full map. Like he's probably soon to get his eighth base, getting control of these uh pocket bases as you can see. And his map control is up to absolutely outstanding. That said. Time is uh, getting the upgrades he needs, and he's kind of trying to move forward to at least kill creep. Oh, poor Robo's here. And I'm gonna see the light of day. Time finds the golden base being taken by his opponent. Rog will try to get something going with a little bit of a surround. With Bainlins trying to get connections into multiple locations. Are they gonna get much? Actually, this is gonna be sacked. Without the mutas, it's not really a fair fight, and even with them, time just as a very strong army to fight the army of Rogue head on. And Rogue not really managing to fight back in any significant way. Yeah, there's uh, one Widow Mine over here, like, he will go down immediately. These are plus one mutas, they hurt like a truck. And uh, what are they looking for? They're looking for add ons. There's not much to defend over here. You can see Overlords being uh, kind of trapped in the middle of nowhere. Their claps are gonna be killed one after the other, so will Missile Turrets, so will a little bit of the production of time, actually. While the Terran player actually funnels down the middle and kills as many Crypt Humans as he can. Rogue has not been replacing Binlings at a steady count he wanted to. Widowman shot is uh, kind of decent. Here comes a run from the Medi from the Mutas as well. The Widowman shots are very, very good. Here goes the Binlings, though. Clean house how many meters are still alive 13 not enough to do any significant aggressive play but still much more than enough to stop time from trying to get control of the map in the middle hype is almost finished plus two flyer attacks just been started nine this network being completed by the zerg player to maneuver army left and right oh you can see these are over pushing a little bit of uh, well, uh, prompting a little bit of army movement from time to get into that position and allowing the meters to try and get control over here on top right. There's no widow mine in this pocket, natural. There's three missile turrets over the production. Uh, it's not gonna be too hard to break through, honestly. So many meters. The doors are there. They're gonna get a couple kills. You can see the doors. Getting some uh, crazy shots, one of the OSIRs dying, and mixed rogue supply block, but that's not really an important thing. With a mine shot, it's not the greatest. Yeah, that one was a little bit better, but still not the greatest. Overseer stanking the shots from the doors, but the Widow Mines getting a full Widow Mine shot to the face. Mutas not really getting the best they can. Bainlin's dead on anything on top of uh, Widow Mines, trying to get them out of the equation and the Widowman shot will get some uh, pretty decent amount of 
leans down. It's not much in this base. These uh, pain leans are not really deciding in the best spot possible. Over here on the top right, Muda is still being aggressive. What a tense game we're looking at. Adrenal Glance, plus two Flyers attack, plus three melee, and plus three Carabas. All in the upgrade tab for Rogue, who's gonna need to sack yet again this golden base. Over here, the Nidus goes up, and Rogue acknowledges the time is completely forfeited this base, this pocket base. And that might be a deadly mistake for the Terran player. Tons of links are about to go inside this Nidus. And with Adrenal Glance, they can break through the production of time at an outstanding rate. They kill stuff fast right now. There's not a lot of links though. Most of them be stationed over here in the bottom left. There's planetary for just going up. Meaning the Rook gets much less damage than I was envisioning. Showing his end without really feeling these Nether's networks. Has been not the greatest. The Bailey's getting inside before the links. Getting a couple good connections, but not much more. These two Nidoses will still go down without really doing much. Yeah, Rook getting good tech, getting good ideas, but not really getting that much leverage out of them. Which is not exactly what I was looking out of him in this last game of the series. That means I've cleared all of the missile turrets, but one. Most of the Widowmines are down as well. So many Widowmines have died this game, by the way. But Time's army movement will prompt Rogue from staying away from that base a little while longer. Time recovering in economy a little bit more. Even though Rogue is on 94 workers and building up a very good bank, he's not really building up a Vespin bank, which is the most important thing of them all. Widowman shot connects. And another Widowman shot will connect. Yeah, these Mutas are going to be absolutely ravished. And the Widowman shot is not connect. Otherwise, it will have spelled the end of the game, by the way. Ling run by, we'll get a couple things down, especially the Widowman shot, which is the most important thing to get down. Vespin Gazer will die as well, Night is Warm will go up in the pocket base again after the Mutas have cleared it. This time more stuff will stream through, but now that time knows the play, he's gonna have Widowman station just when he needs him. Deckweb are going to be killed, making Ghost a little bit less of a factor for a little while longer, but both players Incredibly careful around each other. Plus two, plus one Carabas for fly units. In kind for Rogue, waiting for his mutas to regenerate their health. The worms would go down. But honestly, Rogue is uh, just not really building enough best being uh, bank to justify these losses without really getting much done. Time afraid to bite back himself, so he's uh, not really gonna play with fire. You can see these mutas just, just not getting like anything significant. Okay, they're killing missile turrets, widow mines, supply depots, sensor towers. Uh, that's the extent that they're doing. Over here, though, ooh, yeah, that widow mine did not see that coming. Here goes the penlings. They go straight up on the planetary, and finally. Time breaks down a little. 17 workers down the sink alongside one of the planetaries. Nidus network will not make a worm into that natural anymore. Uh, pocket natural, sorry. But uh, time will replace his lost workers with just more army. Widowman shots will stop the lanes from getting in the position they want to get. One tour will uh, stand in the way between the links and the mineral line. Plus free vehicle plate, vehicle armor incoming for time. I was not expecting this, but these stores are gonna hurt like a truck over the mutas. Rogue not really transitioning out of this himself, not really getting Infestus, Brutalots, Great Spire. I would love to see Great Spire. With a little more heavy commitment with these mutas that are. Honestly, they've outdone their value. Like, they're, they're not gonna be that useful anymore. Not with this strong army being already up and running for time. Ready to honestly kind of make something happen. Oh, the Banelings though, funneling between so many goals, getting quite some decent connections. Over here though, it does look like time will break down these uh, golden base yet again. Where are the Mutas? Where are the Mutas? I do want to see some commitment. They will tank one Winoman shot. 
without really biting back. There's another Winoman shot at the ready. It will not tank him. The doors will get into position. And it does look like time will snag the base and uh, get back to fight another day. A little bit of a betrayer. Winoman shot not getting much done. Tense game. We're approaching the 20th minute mark with the two players still being very healthy on supply. Light Day Fortress will not go down, but many more workers will. 10 more SCVs down the sink for time. The Widow Mines are not enough to defend the location, and the Mutas are not enough to break through the army of time. Time super starved in gas, by the way. With Rogue having a 3k bank. Like, that is super significant. That is uh, actually very bad for time. Uh, even losing goals is just absolutely terrible. The income of Rogue is just through the roof. It's out of this world. Time just not keeping his most important base up and running as long as he wanted to. And the Mutas. Yeah, they may not have dealt like a lot of damage, but being a thorn in the side for time for so long, for more than 10 minutes, made time a little bit weaker on the economy side. Especially since time was never really able to strike where he hurts the most. Yes, he's stroke at this golden base three times so far, but Rogue doesn't really care about this. Yes, he, like, yeah, he doesn't really care. He counts the Banelings, there's so many of them, by the way. They will funnel in the middle of everything, so many Banelings will die without really getting much connection. But this is something that Rook can afford, and it's definitely not something that Time can afford. Like right now, all of a sudden, Time is collecting more Vespin gas than his opponent because he probably have a couple of Vespin gas that are expiring on the side of Rook. But he still has these two to take, which are completely free to take. Nukes finally being taken by Time to try and stop Rook from controlling the whole map. A scan being used forward to spot the Mutas before they get into the third base of Time. 20th minute mark, and the game is still very, very close. 44 more Banelings incoming might make it a little bit less close, but Rogue needs to use them a little bit better than last time. Mutas and Banelings are like ready to get a little bit of uh, action going. The Winamine shots are not good enough. Oh, these main leads are getting a little bit on top of everything, but not on top of as many goals as they wanted to get on top of. The doors are still up and standing, Minion. These Mutas can clear up something, but not everything. There's only two missile turrets over here. This might be yet again a dead planetary. The doors are getting into position. The SCVs are doing their best to keep these missile turrets alive, but now the Mutas have become battle Mutas. And they're bringing the fight to the face of the Marines and the SCVs. Alike under side of the missile turrets. Seven more meters incoming. Rook acknowledges this might be a good moment to try and push time left and right, up and down, and hurt where his army is not. Time stretched a little bit, trying to get control of the middle. Luckily for him, Stargazers is not the longest map from bottom to top. There's not a lot of ground to cover, making this uh, four base array kind of uh, decently easy to hold, as long as it does not have to hold two locations at once. Which is exactly what Rogue is trying to do, by the way. He's trying to hurt over here, so that the Mutas can be free to attack on the top left. Crazy game so far. What a great way to end this amazing series. There's a little bit of a uh, army station over here to stop the Mutas from getting anything going, and now there's many Missile Turrets over here in the Pocket Natural, alongside the Planetary Fortress as well. It feels like time has enough <laughs> Orbital Commands. The Bank of Rogue is uh, through the roof, mineral-wise, but Vespin Income is on its side, it, it just doesn't have a lot of bank. 12 workers dying somewhere for time, I don't know where, here comes the Banelings trying to roll through the middle and they will roll on top of the tours and not much else, on the top side Links and Mutas will make short work of whatever is left, time is bleeding profusely out of this attack, he's probably gonna try and break down this golden base yet again, been losing SCVs upon SCVs and now the Mutas are cutting off the reinforcements, 
These mutas will soon have plus 3 Kyber Blast. Oh my god, these stores are like a truck. They will not be able to clear down the mutas though. The army of time is kind of trying to retreat. Sending the Taurus in. Back home. To deal with the mutas. But this is a dead orbital command. And so much of the army of time is in danger. The palings, the links, the surround. And the muta play finally shines through for Rogue. The army of time is in a devastating moment with the army of Rogue moving forward, finally getting control of the natural, finally getting on the ramp. The production is one stone toss away from these mutas. Rogue plays it carefully while the rest of his link ravage through the economy. There's one important piece of the puzzle. Rogue knows it, and he attacks right into it. A planetary, only one missile turret to defend it. This is such an important bus base to defend. Time is sending his full might over here. Even though his full might is not mighty enough, I think. 195 supply to 123. Rogue doesn't have a lot of workers, but so does time. Rogue using all of his bank to replace the links he used. And now with these many links, he's ready to go for a full Z move. And here goes the surround with the Muta splash damage ravaging through the army of time. Is it GG? It does certainly feel like it. Mutas and links still alive, still ravaging through the economy, still killing all of the army of time. And Rogue! Gets the series!